box? We're like, where is it? Well, that's gonna be my manifestation box. Okay. Right. <laughs> well, my friend. My check's gonna go in there. I like your book should go at high level. Okay. I usually put them by like height. Took this one into the bathtub when you're in town. Opened it up, read the first sentence, and was like, oh god. No. I love setting up stuff like this because I feel like I have a special talent at setting these things up. Especially if you're on the be, west maybe coast. Maybe you can alter consultant. So Phoebe's here visiting me and she's been house sitting while I was away out west taking care of Nico and she was on a juice cleanse the whole time she was here because she's nuts so she hasn't eaten. So before we start shooting the rest of this video I'm going to make her a smoothie bowl which is probably the best thing she could eat you know not too solid like right after the juice cleanse. So I'm going to make two smoothie bowls which I never make and I'm going to make them all like you know the way they do on Instagram with like all the toppings and stuff. So we're going to do banana avocado, spirulina. Is this how you do this, guys? <clears throat> okay, so I've never done that in my life. They look pretty good, but not like perfect, like on Instagram. But anyway, I'm gonna go upstairs and Phoebe and I are gonna shoot a video together and we'll see what she thinks of her first meal off the juice cleanse. First okay. meal. Dee. Wow! <laughs> what kind of green is that? What is that? Usually when I put spirulina or something and it's like dark green, it looks like um, pastel or something. Okay, you've never done this before? I've never done this. I think it's ridiculous. It took way too long. <laughs> no, it looks cool though. <coughs> just... Your style is... Um... Yeah, like everyone has a style. I don't Different. know. I was a little bit like, Ugh, it looks a little messy because I've never done it before. But. Yeah. I want to move this one down. <laughs> it's exactly the same as setting up this. She <laughs> just, you throw everything on and then I'm like, uh, energetically, I think the almond should go down like this. What? But see, it doesn't matter. It's what I wanted to do. Okay. Well. But yeah. But and then this one looks like a cool peace sign. Well, I've already touched this okay. one. I'm happy. Cool. No, okay. okay, take a bite, take a so, bite. So, let me just tell everyone. I haven't eaten in I told them. a while. I decided to do a juice cleanse. A, I was in Asia, and I don't know what, like, I was eating vegan, but I don't know. We got parasites and food poisoning and everything. Also, I'm back in Toronto, and I'm hiking down the road going to get a juice from some juice place. Name 30 bucks for a juice and a bag of organic nuts. I was like, rip off. Eh, no, <laughs> that's insane. You get to keep the glass bottle, which is nice. But I was like, this is insane. So you got a free juice cleanse. Well, I obviously. got a free juice cleanse, but which, whatever. It's amazing. It was awesome. And it got delivered to my door, and then I had eight juices. My so door. <laughs> busy. Laura's door. Anyway, what I'm getting at is I've never completed a three-day juice cleanse. I've done like half a day, and then I've been like, oh, I need food. Day two was a fucking nightmare. I was so drained, stuffed up like crazy. I guess it's like pulling the crap out of you, mm -hmm. um, which actually might... Cleanse must be much harder for someone that eats meat, dairy, eggs, and all this Imagine junk Imagine how stuff. awful you would feel, yeah. Oh my god, you'd be... I'm hobbling up the stairs because I'm out of energy. And then this chick falls off her electric bike in the Okanagan. She's got yeah, cuts and bruises, so she's hobbling up the <laughs> stairs. I haven't eaten three So now days. you're a vessel is what you're saying. That's what you're getting at. Oh, my other goal with the cleanse was clear all the junk out of you then the universe can be a clear vessel so your intuition, you can hear it and source and everything can come through you because I want to be able to channel shit easier. Like artists are constantly channeling because they're like in the flow state and they're bringing things through. I want to be able to be in that state. So here's my first okay. meal. Get Made to, by Hot for Food. Get to the first bite. <laughs> oh, God, I grab myself. I like to pray over my food before I eat it. Sorry. Every time I eat, I don't do that. I'm always doing it. You know what? I do it less in Toronto, but I do it back home. I mean, I'm not ungrateful for it. I take a second, but I'm not like... It changes the energy of your food if you take a second and put energy into it. It literally changes the energy. It's just like water, right? Well, like, I put good energy into it when I made it, so that's not me. Well, if you're in a hurry, you could just say, I love you. 
So, Ronnie Ron swore to never eat on camera. She clearly has never watched YouTube. <laughs> she says people like it. That's weird. I like to eat alone these in people, my room. These people right now are getting so amped up because we're eating on camera right now. What the hell is wrong with you people? While you're, while you're talking, no one's listening to you because they're all looking at me going... I like to sit alone. I know, but I'm going to make you take your first bite on camera and then I'll... Wish. I don't, I like to just eat alone in peace. Like, I need to be conscious mm -hmm. when I'm eating, and people are fucking talking to me. I'm, I'm talking to you while I'm eating. Because okay. I don't care. It's good, but it doesn't what? feel... <laughs> it doesn't feel like that crazy, like, I haven't eaten in... Mm. I think the third day of the juice cleanse, after that, you can do, like, a seven-day one. Because I don't feel as like... So you don't even want to eat that is what you're saying? Well, I'm going to eat it, but I mean, oh. it's not that like, oh, I need to sit and eat a veggie burger now feeling. Mm -hmm. There's no veggie burgers in this. <laughs> I'm really, Unfortunately. I'm going to try and dig for the veggie burger. I fucking love veggie burgers. Mm. You can talk. Yeah, well, what I was going to say, because people who are watching and they're like, who's that girl? <laughs> This is Phoebe, and Phoebe and I used to work together at Much Music and MTV. Uh, we were co-hosts, and we did MTV's uh, After Degrassi for a while. And then, uh, as you know, I got laid off from television in the summer of 2014, and they kept Phoebe on. But Phoebe was already... Whatever! Like, so Phoebe was like... I already was going to quit! I was trying to convince Lauren to quit, and then they let her go, and I... And I went in and quit myself. The shitty thing was is that she got laid off, so she got paid out. I quit, so I didn't get paid out. <laughs> I, um, yeah, I would never have quit because that's stupid. <laughs> just because I've been laid off before, and it's fine because you just get paid out. So, um, But I wanted to quit to move to this yes. island already, so yeah. it was that I just was So like, Phoebe quit, like, I got let go in July. You quit by, like, October, I think, right? Oh god, I quit like really soon Not after. Really soon. Like oh, September maybe. Oh, I was smart enough to take um some time that I right. needed yeah. to go to the island to see first. if I for sure wanted to exactly. quit and live there. Yeah. And it was like, you know. But you time. already knew because for months when we were still doing after Degrassi, which ended up getting cancelled. Yeah, we did our last episode. It was supposed to get on Team Nick. Yeah, but that didn't happen, yeah, in the US. Anyways. So uh but when we were working on MTV, she was already going on and on about the island because she had gone to visit her sister like in the early spring. And then, oh my god, please don't fall and hit the water and the candles. Anyways. <laughs> um, so you had already been talking about like all the dreams you wanted to make happen. Like, I'm going to move to Salt Spring. I'm going to live on an island. I'm going to travel to India and Bali and Thailand. Like, I'm going to do all these things. <coughs> and then she quits and then she goes and does all of that within eight, seven months, seven months or something. <laughs> so, um, yeah, you, you had already talked about all your plans. And then, of course, my plan was I'm going to start Hopper Food. And well, you already would I was talk already about working there sometimes because Lauren, I was, like, just a personality on air where Lauren was a personality on air too but had mm -hmm. producing background and, like, Lauren was a producer being paid as a host pretty much for really. Mm -hmm. Essentially. Well, well, we don't know. Yeah. We, I, we never did know who made who made what money because Lauren always says, we don't talk about money. We can talk about it now. I don't like to. Well, I, 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 I already know I have a few I more already, than me. I already told them what I made. So I don't really remember. But can you? <laughs> you don't remember? I think I know that my paycheck was about my was about the same as my rent, which my rent was seventeen fifty a month for a bachelor apartment. So your paycheck every week was seven? No, we got paid every two weeks, didn't we? You don't know what your 2014 tax year was? What? You left in 2014, so you would have had to file your taxes My for 2013 or 2014, so you don't know what your salary was? No. They were like, no, we want you to stay, and I was like, uh, okay, fine. I'll stay if you give me a new clothing allowance because yeah. We were out of clothes and we needed to have like, we needed to keep our image up so it was important. Now I believe wear, your image wear your same clothes over and over and over. It's insanity. Right, that's just TV. You just that's, wear yeah, the same okay. thing ever. Yeah. Give me a, give me a new clothing allowance because we're supposed to have one and they wouldn't, and they, nope, they wouldn't bump it up. Okay. 
Give me a little bit of a raise. You just cut what? How many people did they fire? Oh, they fired like 110 at that time. You fire 110 people whose salaries are laid too off. Much? Oh, laid <laughs> off. They laid off a jillion people basically, but couldn't afford to bump my raise up a tiny bit. They didn't offer me. you more money. I you? asked for more money, and they said no. That's crazy. And the third one was to give me more freedom so I can work on projects that feel good to me that are outside the corporate. And they were like, crap, no, nope. And I said peace. Yeah. And I moved to the island. Oh, you know, but also now, I, the, you know, they're love to them, too. Oh, it's fine. But, but peace, but fuck that. You gotta do what you want in your life. You so do. How, and how you much money did you make? So at the end, I was making about 87000 a year. Which is what? Like a paycheck every two weeks. I don't know. My salary was that, though. But then that's, gro that's, that's gross. So then net is like after taxes, which after taxes you make like seven. You don't remember 000. what you got every two weeks, approximately. No, but you should know that. You should know what your full amount is. I don't remember. Okay, so 52 weeks in a year, eat that per week. Oh, that's so what I made, making, too. So yeah, same. mine was, mine, that's see, exactly see, what I made. But listen. I haven't seen but that. But listen, now. but listen, this <laughs> is why you don't talk about it when you work together, because I... I don't care now, but at the time, I would have been so fucking mad Pissed. if you were making, we because were making the same. Because I have 10 years experience! And they, what did I say? I know. They picked me up <laughs> out of the dumpster! <laughs> That's exactly what I made! I know, it doesn't matter. At the, I honest, At the time, I would have been like, you know, like, what the fuck? Even though, yeah, I, fi even though I figured we were all probably making the same, it didn't matter. I'm like, I'm terrible at negotiating, so I never asked for more, which right. I should have. And Lauren was like hosting the big shows. Oh, they yeah. just they I had like, me doing the smaller stuff because Lauren can be more professional and I'm whatever, the jokester. <laughs> I'm, I'm the sad kid. Anyway, that's why you never talk about money. That's crazy. Yeah. But I've spent my whole career in television getting paid less than the guys I co-hosted with and everything. It's whatever. That's just how it works. But the problem is, and I'm not blaming anybody, I'm not going to sit here and be like, Everything's unequal. It's like no, fucking get some balls, Lauren, and negotiate. Right. So it's my fucking fault. <laughs> yeah, get some balls. <laughs> but yeah, so when we're doing the the TV stuff, Lauren was she has this pr pr producing background and has just has way more experience than some of the the producers there. Everybody there. there. <laughs> so we we'd be assigned a project, and she'd be like, "This is stupid. It should be done like this. Why aren't we doing it like this?" Blah blah blah, and then we go. I got laid off. <laughs> and yeah, and we'd go in there and pitch all these ideas. Yeah. We want to do a piece with this Esther the Wonder Pig. What a cool story that Steve and Derek are now vegan. And blah 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 blah. blah. And now, uh, no, duh, no, no, uh, shoot didn't happen. Shoot didn't happen. Now look, Esther's like a more star. more Instagram followers than us combined, pretty much. But you know so what? So now I'm Lauren's free, and she does her food stuff, and free. she does her YouTube. And the only person she can bitch at, they're fucking it up, is John. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. No, I'm so thankful and like everything happened the way it was supposed to. It all makes sense. It's all good. But yeah, I was like miserable those last like couple and years And it's there. crazy that there's still people there doing this. It's fucking scene. crazy. Well, I'm glad that I'm not in that path anymore. Me but. too. I'm glad I had that path. That's what I'm Me too! <laughs> because, you know, we even like, um, I'll show a clip of what we used to do on MTV. I was gonna say though, I think it's really interesting when you hear people's stories of feeling super lost and confused and they don't know what their purpose in life is. Mm -hmm. And then you, you hear the story about how they find their passion because the thing about like, Figuring out what your purpose in life is, is you might not know and you don't need to know when you graduate high school and you don't even need to yeah. know when you graduate university and whatever, but it's like, I always tell people if you just do stuff, like you can't sit back and do nothing and wait for it to find you. You have to move, you have to be active, take the steps, do something. It doesn't mean you have to pick up and fly across the world, but like go out, try something new. You never really know what's gonna come your way until you take action. And so all you have to do is take action and it will find you, but you gotta put in a little bit of work first, right? You may also have like a ton of passions, like yeah, kind of like we're told, like you said, like you, you, you go to school and then you pick the job and then you do the job. But it's like, I always say this, but like life's a journey and like maybe yeah. you have a bunch of passions and like maybe you, you find your passion and you do it for a while and it's amazing, but then you grow out of it and you move on to the next level and you, and you find a new passion and that's really cool because what your passion is right now might not be your passion when you're mm -hmm. two years from now or when you're like 50 or 80 I would hope not because that might be a little bit strange but 
but it is always evolving. But yeah, if you kind of like yeah. feel lost and you don't know what to do, it's just like move, go, like and do I think something. To find your passion is just to do what makes your heart feel good. Because sometimes I get confused and I'm like, am I doing what makes me passionate? And I'm like, what makes me feel good? What makes me feel alive? It all was meant to be, because that was a transition to me just being able to do this myself, right? Totally. Like getting, being more open and talking about what I actually want to talk about on camera, instead of talking about One Direction or some crap. Yeah. So, you know, and I never wanted to do music anymore. I was like over it. So it's really cool how that happened. Because it was we all... both still love music, but the music industry. The music industry is wow. crazy. Well, it was my dream to be a much music VJ, whose dream is in, it, in Canada, yeah. and there's very few people that actually get to do it. Yeah. And because of it, I you because of TV, you're now doing YouTube and, and all these things, and no, and you're producing and editing and shooting and everything yourself. And because of doing TV, I now gained a following on social media that I I get to inspire through just being myself and posting about my journey online. Now people are following it and. Um, a lot of that I have, mm -hmm. I owe to Much mm -hmm. Music and MTV for, for bringing me on. And today's top 10. Man, did you get today's so many followers from doing that? <laughs> and in number one is Justin Bieber. Now, send us a tweet. Let us know what kind of hairstyles you like on Justin Bieber best. This one, this one, or this one. Tweet me at Phoebe Dykstra with the hashtag today's top 10. With the hashtag Bieber's haircut. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. But because of that, we got lots of followers from That's that That's the thing. Because of doing TV, get this big you cast this wide net you get all these followers and like whatever now there's new followers like yeah with what we do but like yeah it, it puts you at an advantage for sure to be like <coughs> i'm somebody of influence like mm -hmm, you yeah. know it gives you that thing that you need sometimes to just succeed in doing whatever you want to do yeah kind of like that's not you don't need that to start doing youtube or to start doing anything you don't need to have a social media following but in, no. this, in this age of how everybody just loves looking at social media followings and being like you're cool you're not cool because of how many followers you have it's like cool we got that following because of our jobs at, in television mm -hmm. definitely you know? yeah i will also like, say think, that anytime that i wasn't on tv i was focused on my social media as well so you putting that extra energy into it and like being creative with with my posts and stuff, it wasn't just much music. Didn't make my because, but it's but it, yeah no, but it's fun to do that. That was like the fun part. I thought I loved like creating your brand. I thought that was fun. Like yeah. getting a platform in which to create and think about your brand creatively, and also be part of a big brand and get to distinguish yourself from that brand. Yeah. Like, I never wanted to be identified as Lauren from Much Music, and I'm so... Oh, I thick. did. So cool. Like, Not now. Like, at the beginning, obviously, but then once you're in it, you realize, oh, God, I can't get stuck to this because this doesn't right. last forever. And I'm right. so glad that now, if I may be so egocentric right now, <laughs> just that, like, I'm just glad that, like, now, when people see me, they're like, oh, hot for food. Mm, they're not yeah. like, oh, look at that washed up VJ over there. <laughs> Yeah, like, I, I'm I just so glad I never wanted to be like, oh, what's that girl doing? Right. We're yeah. following our dream. I know that's ego, but it's like, I just had an I knew idea, and I'm just glad that my new idea <coughs> worked, and it yeah. wasn't a flop. And I feel that sometimes, even though yes. a lot of the time when, when people see me now, it'll be like, hi, hi, I follow you on Instagram. They love you. And I'm like, oh, you, thank you. I'm so glad that what I'm saying is influencing someone. Um... But I still get those like kind of insecure things of like, oh, I used to be on TV or like I used to be cool and like these kind of like things that it takes a while I think to like I think let you're go way of that. cooler now. I know that's what some people say. I'm like, duh, you but I don't have the hair extensions and the eyelash <laughs> extensions and the an hour and a half sitting in the makeup, which I Exactly. Why would you get my out? nails drilled at, putting all these things? Yeah, you just wear fake nails. Going in the mall under the fluorescent lights. Now I can't even go outside without shocker glasses <laughs> on, for God's sake. So I thought that people wouldn't like me anymore. Like, now I just like hang out in the forest pretty much and like, look at me. This is my new tree. I could go on a rant. I don't know how long about we want to make this video. No about taking celebrities off pedestals. This Oracle, mm. my Oracle friend Unity, who I've been hanging out with, having celebrities on pedestals and believing that they're better than you, like, okay, I'm going to the Justin Bieber concert tonight. Praise. I may be on a pedestal, but my God, do I love the you bees. You put him on a pedestal, though. Oh, yeah. 
Yeah. <laughs> you know, that kind of stuff. Okay, so that's what I'm saying. Tonight I'm going to this concert. It's everyone being like, praise. Oh. Although I just did praise him. Okay, hold on a second. You are Justin Bieber. We're all Justin Bieber. The point is, when you look up to someone else, it's great to look up to someone else as a role model. But when you're looking up, being like, that person's so cool. That person's better than me. That person's this. That person's this. Just remember that, like, you are magical and you are awesome and we're literally all equal. We all just have different roles on the planet and yeah. you're special and you can do whatever you want. And, like, but just to remember that. But I do think that those figures, for a lot of people, instill that confidence. So. In what way? I think that Justin Bieber is probably influencing a large majority of his audience to believe in themselves. Um, right, because he's using his you know, platform want, in a way. want to be successful entrepreneurs or follow yep. their dreams and they want to be a singer. So even though you put them on a pedestal, just like keep it a little in check and realize, like I do think that those figures do bring confidence to people as long as they're, you know, it still takes your own personal um, power and your own sort of connection with yourself to get that, even when you're a kid, to know that like, Yes, I love these people and they've given me, they've inspired me to want to be more myself by, by them being, they're aspirational, right? Oh yeah, okay. Yeah, okay. But for some people, you're right, it can be like kind of a toxic, gross thing where they put them on a pedestal and they feel really bad about themselves because, because they're, they're not like, like they're that. Not that yeah. So it can have both effects. Oh yeah. Yeah, you're right. Because I got, I got so yeah. like, yeah, that's right, we need to take celebrities off pedestals. Yeah, but then I'm like, well, you need them. Oh, Because yeah. I was so inspired by, you know, certain celebrities and maybe <coughs> not, not people as big as Justin Bieber, but just people that I looked at aspirationally, like, right. oh, they're cooler than me, but I, but they're allowing me to feel like I could one day be that too. Oh yeah, okay. They're, they're at least giving me the idea that, oh, I could do that. Like, like the VJ thing, like people on much music, I was always right. like, I was like, they're cooler than me, but they're not that much cooler. Like, I could be that when I'm old. Like, they inspired that. Right. That thought of, like, oh, I could do that. Not so that being cool just... is the only thing, but that's what what you're thinking about when you're a kid. It's like, how am I right. going to not be this loser forever? <laughs> yeah. Although, like, losers usually losers are the turn coolest out people. to be way cooler exactly. because they're different. Yeah. So, all hail the losers out there. Oh, We're all losers. Everyone's We're all losers. losers. <laughs>